For those of you who follow me on either Twitter, Instagram, Facebook or all three, you'd have noticed I tweeted a picture of this on Monday and it's the Kangatech ProTank V4 uh, and this arrived on Monday. So what I thought I'd do is a quick look and then later on in the week at Vapor Expo at the NEC Birmingham uh, we'll be looking at it and talking to my colleagues about it because I'm going to be using it from now until then. Um, it is a new design, it has a top side fill um, as opposed to a top fill, it, it's the top but it's the side. Um, it comes with a ceramic 0.5 ohm atomizer, a 1.5 ohm mouth to lung atomizer and also a new design on the RBA deck which comes pre-coiled with two Clapton coils and you also get some spares in the box too. So uh, let's go down there and have a good close look and then we'll come back and I'll uh, give it a vape. So here we go, the uh, the ProTank V4 from Kangatech uh, arrived in my sticky little hands yesterday. So uh, this is going to be a quick look uh, and then we will have a much better look at it um, when we're at Vapor Expo. So uh, let's just uh, take it out of the box. Similar kind of affair to the rest of the kind of sub tank range with this slidey in the outy boxy. Um, so we'll just put that to one side. And you will see in the box you get your pro tank. You get the uh, little instructions that go with it. You also get your little card so you can check that it's an authentic device by going to the Kangatech website. You get the obligatory little packet of Japanese organic cotton. Um, but on this device what you get is not a blue screwdriver, not a white screwdriver, not even a black screwdriver. You get a little Allen key, yes, for the RBA deck. You get uh, four spare grub screws and you also get two Clapton coils uh, and they are going to fit in the little RBA unit and I'll show you that in just a second. You get a total of three heads for this. This is the mouth to lung atomizing head uh, and this is a 1.5 ohm as you can see. Fairly standard. Uh, it's round as opposed to the original square ones that came with the sub tank. Inside here there is a ceramic coil uh, which has got a resistance of 0.5 ohms so that is for sub ohming and the 1.5 is for mouth to lung. They're trying to use the same tank for two different purposes which is very good. And then this is the new design for the RBA deck. Yeah, let me just uh, move this all to one side and we'll have a little zoom in. So this is the new design RBA deck. As you can see it's round uh, with some detailing, some knurling here on the bottom. Uh, and some little indentations around the top section. Holding the knurling, you unscrew the top and you will see it is already pre-coiled with not one but two Clapton coils. And like I said in the little bag you get a further two ready-built Clapton coils along with four spare grub screws and they are tiny, 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 tiny. Uh, and then of course the Allen key for you to use um, and you'll just see here look that's on the side of the deck are where your four grub screws go um, and they are to obviously hold the top and the bottom of each Clapton coil so top one side bottom one side and then bottom one side top one side so you've got enough room and you're not having to muck about trying to get two posts through the same hole which is always a difficulty I have to say. Um, so that is going to be interesting. I've never actually seen up close and personal before believe this or not a Clapton coil until today. Um, I've not bothered with making them because they are just too fiddly for me. Um, so there you go. Uh, and they look very nice. 
So what we'll do is we'll just see what the resistance of this is. Um, and I'm going to start off by using the 0.5 coil that came with the actual tank. But let's take a little close look at the tank. And here is the tank itself. As you can see, airflow on the bottom. Now, in the old days, this would just keep spinning around. Now it's got a little tag, a little, little bit here that just stops it from moving. So it's fully open and then anywhere in between until fully closed. On the top, they've got a new design drip tip, as you can see, fairly wide. It's stainless steel and delving at the top. Some people don't like stainless steel drip tips, so they've kind of compromised a bit and made a, uh, made a combination stainless steel um, base and Delrin top. It is a 510 connection with a fairly wide o-ring there to keep it in place and you'll see there it has got variable airflow um, not unlike the TFV4s um, that have the airflow on the drip tip that I never use to be fair <laughs> but it is there for you should you wish you can keep it closed off or again you can open it this one just spins around as opposed to having a little lug to stop it from moving and that just fits in the top now this is a top filler uh, and they do say it has a child lock uh, and the child lock is it's rather ingenious uh, I guess what you have to do is you have to twist the top section and keep twisting it and keep twisting it and keep twisting it to unlock it once you've unlocked it you then get access to your filling area which is here and you simply move that in the direction of the arrow or opposite and you get a rather large hole there in order to um, fill your juice so it doesn't matter if you're using a needle tip or if you're using a standard um, bottle really that it's going to fill quite nicely and then when you've finished you simply twist it back the opposite direction push your cap down and then lock it shut all well and good very easy um, not going to exactly come apart very quickly so you're not going to uh, knock the top and um, spill juice I have done that with a TF before I have to say uh, it's been in my pocket gone to one side gone on the wrong side and just flipped over the top and then juice has leaked out from the top um, so that is a fairly robust anti-leakage um, setup there I have to say so to uh, change your atomizer it's a uh, bottom screw take that off there's your tank and then you can unscrew the atomizer that's in it and this one has got a kind of a gray gray black ring on the bottom um, whereas the mouth to lung 1.5 ohm has got a red band on it um, so they're also a slightly different as well because this 0.5 has got a different shape on the top um, so you can uh, tell the difference between the two um, it's also slightly different in the way of width so this is the 0.5 ohm and this is the 1.5 ohm so it's very slightly different and very slightly different in the length as well if you look against them um, you'll just see there but they, they obviously both fit in uh, and then the RBA deck has got a red band on but you can't really mistake that about anything apart from the RBA deck so let's just put this on the base and we'll see what the resistance of the coils are uh, I'm just going to put it on the Roleo which is what I'm going to use it on the twin Claptons are coming in at 0 0.41 0 0.41 ohm resistance which is uh, rather good so I'll take that off for now what I'll do is I'll build this um, at a later stage and uh, I shall let you know what I think of that bit um, but for today and for the rest of the week what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ceramic 0.5 ohm resistance coil which is this one as you can see it's got two large juice holes that go into the wadding 
um, on one side and then two smaller ones. It does say on there Kangatek 0.5 ohm and then it also says here ceramic. You're not going to see that on here. Um, it's that really, really faded writing. I wish to do it a little bit, a little bit darker for uh, those of us that um, have to use very focals <laughs> these days. Um, yes. What I'm going to use to test it on is some Muffin Man. It's high VG, uh, and this is three milligram, which is why I'm going to use this. It's just here, um, and it means that I can do some nice lung inhales with this um, and not get too nicked. So I'll just um, put a couple of drops on. Just let that soak in a little bit. Give it a helping hand. And then we'll just put the base back on. And now we'll see what the filling is like. I'm going to close the airflow first. Unscrew the top section. Pull that back and then slide the slide it away. There we go. So we're in there. And then now see that's too big. <laughs> that is too big to fit this particular device, but it's okay. I can just drip it in from the top. And I'm going to fill this all the way. I'll definitely vape all of it. Right, so I have just cleaned the little drip that was there. Uh, we're going to close this down. So we're going to just turn that. There we go. And then push the top down and lock it shut. And away we go. And that is more or less full of very yummy juice. I have to say the drip tip is quite loose on the um, airflow so uh, just be careful you're not going to knock that so we've got it on the rollo now it's coming in at 0.77 on here um, let me just put it on let's put it on the coil master And the coil master is giving me a resistance of 0.67. Um, the Rolo is giving me a resistance of 0.77. And the resistance of the coil should be 0.5. So which one's right? <laughs> which one is right? I wonder. So I've got this at um, 17 watts at the minute. So I'm going to turn this up. We'll start it off at 25 watts and uh, see where we go. Okay, that's primed the call a bit. So now we can turn it up. And we'll go up to 35. I've got the airflow fully open. certainly produces it is quite loud i have to say i'm going to turn that airflow down a little bit and turn my ampage down my wattage down a little bit as well less airflow in a few less watts i think so i've got that about half now about half open and i've got it set at 30 watts And that is still really, really airy. It certainly produces, but it is. It is a really airy device. I have to say, a lot airier than um, the sub tanks. 
and um, certainly more airy than the TFV4, uh, which is good if you want a lot of airflow. I think I need to pump up the wattage a little bit. I'll take it to 40 watts. So we're now at 40 watts. And that is really producing. Um, let's uh, let's move the camera, and um, I'll talk to you some more in a minute. And welcome back. <laughs> I have to say, um, it really produces, as you can see from the opening shot there. Um, I've still got this set at forty watts. Um, the Resistance has now settled down. It's now saying 0.69, um, so it's probably going to take a little bit of time to bed in. However, it would be nice to see the exact resistance um, as stated on the atomizer on a device. Um, it kind of gives you a bit more confidence to think, well, is my device out? Is the atomizer out? Um, maybe it needs a while to bed itself in um, before it gives the correct resistance. Um, but I have to say, the flavour that I'm getting from this Muffin Man, uh, which is a really nice juice, and I've actually got quite a lot left um, <laughs> because I switch juices so often. Um, I'm never on the same juice all day, generally. Sometimes I do. Um, but I like to mix it up, so I've got all my devices. They've all got different flavours in because then I can just chop and change. And it makes juices last longer <laughs> because I'm not vaping it all in one go. Um, but I must pick up some more of this uh, when we are at Vapor Expo. Um, and you'll be seeing this after Vapor Expo. So hopefully I've got a little stash of juices um, that I can talk to you about. But let's get back to the Kangatech Pro Tank V4. Um, it's a really nice sleek design. Um, it obviously follows the same um, kind of design as the previous tanks in the range, the sub tank um, and the sub tank plus, and then onto the other sub tank. Um, they've made some differences, some changes, as you've seen. The top section that they are saying is anti child proof. Um, uh, I think a normal kind of toddler wouldn't necessarily know to unscrew it and then pull it up and twist to get to the juice, but it doesn't really matter because all I've got to do is take the bottom section off and the juice comes out anyway. Um, so that it's it's a good protection, I have to say. Um, whether or not it's going to deter uh, a child is, is debatable, really. Um, but I do like the fact that you have to do that so you can't accidentally... Um, knock the juice. Um, let me give you an example. I've got a TFV4 here uh, and if that's in your pocket and you happen to catch and um, this is a bad example because this is quite stiff but if you happen to catch the top in your pocket and it happens to be at an angle uh, then the juice does come out and it's happened to me once um, so I am very careful that I don't um, I don't knock that and I keep it upright in my pocket. But going back to the, uh, the pro tank because that's what I'm talking about. Um, I like the drip tip. Um, I don't mind stainless steel drip tips. I know some people don't uh, don't like them, um, but I don't mind stainless steel. I do like the Delrin drip tip. I'm not particularly bothered about the airflow on the top, and I do find that to be a little bit loose. I have to say, it doesn't take much to twist that around. So, if you do find you get an extra airy vape, check that first. Um, I like the airflow on the bottom. I like the fact that it's reasonably stiff when you're uh, when you're adjusting it but not too loose um, and not too stiff either so it's just about right really and I like the fact that it's got the little stop on there which stops you um, when you get to the end um, like I said earlier it is very airy and if I put it full bore uh, and so what I'll do I'll put it up to 50 watts uh, the Rolo I've recently updated the firmware so it will go to 250 um, but I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever take this device to 250 watts. Um, but that's just me. So, 
fire it's uh 50 watts yes here we go uh, airflow fully open no airflow on the top It's a producer, it really is, and the flavour is there. That's the important thing for me. It's not so much that it can produce an immense amount of vapour. If I really want to go cloud chase and I can build a really low resistance um, dripping deck for that, what I do want to do though is I want to get the flavour of the juice that I'm vaping on. And if I don't get that, then the tank is not for me. That's generally why I always use the RBAs and I build my own coils and I use my Japanese cotton and what have you um, because I know I'm going to get the flavour profile from the juice that I like uh, when I do that. But I have to say the flavour of this Muffin Man is coming through leaps and bounds on this ceramic coil. Um, it, is, it is very good indeed. I do like it. But as you can see, the, the vapour production um, is immense. It does get a tad warm, but I am running it at 50 watts. Um, I'm going to take the airflow down to half. And let's give it another go. And until what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try, before I do that, I've got the airflow fully open on the top and the bottom. So on the drip tip and on the bottom of the device for the airflow going up. I'll give that a go now. That changes the flavour. That does change the flavour. I'm going to turn that back down again. So no airflow on the top, but airflow on the bottom. And the flavour's back. So much vapour in this room right now. <laughs> um, yes. It does cool the vapour right down, I have to say, with it fully open on the top. But I think it leaves a bit of flavour. Again, it's a very subjective thing, my, my personal taste. Um, but it is, um, look, I've got a couple of mils already. Um, it is producing the flavour very nicely indeed so this is kind of day one uh, and you know from previous looks at that that i do i don't give a kind of definitive answer on anything until i've used the device for some time so i've got um, i've got a good few days until the weekend uh, today's tuesday um so at, we are at vapor expo thursday friday saturday sunday so saturday or sunday I will update you on um, on how this is going uh, and I'll quite probably coil up the RBA deck and I might do that live on one of the shows. Um, I might have done it already. Who knows? <laughs> I'm recording this ahead of time. So, uh, you know, anything could happen between now and when you see this. Um, so for the moment, that's the Kangatech Pro Tank V4. At the moment, it's a thumbs up for me. I'm liking it a lot. Um, I shall let you know more as we go on. So, as I uh, as I promised at the end of that little VT, uh, I would give you a, a little update on the Kangatech Pro Tank V4. Uh, and I've been using it with different juice over the last three days here at Vapor Expo 2016. We're still here. Uh, we've finished our little bit we did earlier on. Uh, which uh, went out today, which is Sunday, uh, and uh, now I thought I'd just do the little bit that I said I was going to do. What I've not done is coiled up the RBA uh, deck yet. I will do that in the coming weeks, uh, and I should bring you an update on that. But um, yes, this is uh, another heavy VG juice I have in here, and I've, uh, I've had lots of different flavours and uh, different styles of juice over the last three days. Um, so uh, here we go. And 
and as you can see now, and as you saw before, it certainly produces. It's a lovely little tank, very nice indeed. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing around with the RBA deck and the Clapton coils. I actually got one of the guys here to Clapton coil my TFV4, uh, which was rather interesting. A, he'd never done one before, uh, and B, it was quite a tight fit. Um, but uh, that's for a future show, yes. But anyway, the Proton V4, I'm liking it. It's a nice little tank, and like I said, I'm looking forward to playing with the RBA deck.